people gathering together <coughs> in the house of God. I'll tell you, there's, there's a lot of churches that have so far canceled their services, and uh, who knows if we may follow that too. I don't know. We'll see what the president says. But uh, God loves his people to gather together. Uh, I think it's good for us to gather together. Uh, taking the proper precautions, I guess. But um, good to see y'all here this evening. So if you don't know it, Pastor and his crew, whoever that is, are out camping right now. Uh, they've taken a trip out to enjoy nature, do some fishing, do some uh, looking at nature, I guess. I'm not sure what they're going to do out there. They're sweating out there, I know that, because this is not their best camping weather. Um, and they're going to be returning. He'll be back Sunday for service. Uh, we also have uh, the 28th. There's going to be a TNT event for that for the group, uh, 55 and older. All right, if you're in that age bracket, uh, come on out. It's going to be the 28th at, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. No, Brother Rick. Brother Rick. No. Yes. My phone said they had canceled the TNT and would let us know further. Canceled. Yes, sir. All right, Sister Leah, do you have any announcements? It's canceled. Okay. All right. All right. So forget that one. We do have some things coming up. That won't be changed. Palm Sunday is still going to be April 5th. So just prepare yourself for that. It, it is, it's a wonderful day. Uh, it's the week before the Lord's resurrection. Uh, and so uh, we want to be ready for that spiritually, uh, mentally. Just be ready for that whether we're here or not. The 10th is Good Friday. Uh, and so we would just invite everybody to come out. They're still planning on to be an Easter egg hunt tentatively. So bring, have they got enough donations, anybody know? Plastic eggs is what they want, and they're going to put stuff inside it, the ladies, my wife and sister Mary. So um, bring plastic eggs for the kids, and bring some money, I guess, paper money or hard money will be good to go in those eggs for those little kids. All right, I think that covers the announcement, and I got some wrong, or some right. Um, but we're going to go ahead and open up a prayer, we're, you know... We, we look around the world and things have changed a lot, even since the last service. Uh, and I think it's an exciting time to be alive. Um, and if you look carefully at the events, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a preacher of prophecy, but I do like studying the prophetic. And it's very easy to look around the world and see, and I hope I'm not stepping on your toes for your sermon tonight, it's easy to look around the, and, and see how the Lord is preparing this world for His return, all right? He's going to come again. He's going to he's going to carry his people out of here, and then we're going to see a complete we're going to see a world like today, times ten. So if you can imagine that today, if you go to Walmart right now, I went there on my way from work. Not almost nothing on the shelves. There's plenty of ice cream and cake mixes, so we, we got that. So we're we're set. Uh, but people are really afraid. Uh, it's a great time to test to be a testimony and to testify to your friends, your coworkers your family who members who are not saved, uh, that we are the people who live in fear because we know that God is controlling circumstances. He has arranged circumstances so that this event is happening. Uh, you can rest assured God was not caught by surprise like our whole country was, like the whole world was. He knew what was coming, and he's prepared us for that. Right? We Again, the scripture we keep repeating is he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love first, Remember love in these times. People need love. Power. We need power this time when so many around us are weak. And a sound mind. God has given his church those things. They're ours to possess and to take. So we need to exercise them. All right? He's given them. He's given his church gifts. We need to exercise those things that he's given us. So let's ask him to be here in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are able to gather together, Lord, in your name. Uh, the family of God, sons and daughters of the living God, Lord, coming into this place to testify about our love for you, uh, to, to be in fellowship one with another, but also with you, Lord. We have gathered here in the name of Jesus, and we know by his word he is here in our midst. So, Lord Jesus, we ask you to take this service, to control the music and the singing and the preaching and the praying and the, and the, the needs at the altar, Lord. Have your way, Lord, in the service, in our hearts, in our lives, Lord, that we might be a light to this world. Uh, and, and, which is in a great time of darkness, Lord, that we can be Jesus Christ to our friends and family members and neighbors. Lord, be in this place, Lord, and have your way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right, we're going to sing a, a couple of congregationals out of our Red Back Hymnal. And we're going to begin with page 313. 
says, I have somebody with me. <coughs> Hallelujah. Shall fill the 
earth, the sea, and the sky. God will take away all sickness and the sufferings, tears will dry. When our Savior shall come back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be back. A thousand years will have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Well, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. shall come to Zion then with joy when in all his home the mountain nothing hurts or shall destroy perfect peace shall reign in every heart and love without our Lord after Jesus shall come back to birth again oh our Lord is coming back to earth again yes our Lord is coming back to earth again Satan will be bound a thousand years, will have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Then the sin and sorrow, pain and death of this dark world will cease. In a glorious reign with Jesus of a thousand years of peace. All the earth is burning, crying for that day of sweet release. When our Jesus to come back to earth again. When our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound a thousand years, will have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Lord shall come to Zion then with joy, and in all his holy mountain nothing hurts or shall destroy. Perfect peace shall reign in every heart and love without our Lord. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound a thousand years, will have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound a thousand years, will have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back.
you'll bless them, Lord, that you'll multiply them and use again to exalt the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Expect something great from God tonight. We're going to have uh, Brother Rick come and sing a special for us tonight. It's a very familiar song. It says, Get sweeter as the days go by. Sweeter, sweeter, sweeter as the days go by. 
is the very foundation of our relationship with Christ. It's, it's what binds you and me to Jesus. God's faith goes beyond sight. God's faith operates supernaturally beyond the limitations of our natural man. It's only by faith can we understand God's ways. In order for us to receive anything from God, we first must have faith in Him. The Bible says, uh, without faith it is impossible to please the Lord. One cannot claim to be a Christian if there is no faith in our lives. We cannot honor God without faith. We are not able to do what He's called us to do without faith. We are saved through faith. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace are ye saved, are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Bible instructs us without faith it is impossible to be saved. Faith is birthed into us at an altar of salvation. That's where our faith is begun and continues to grow. Obedience is faith being demonstrated. We respond to God's call by faith. Faith gives us a desire to love the Lord. It gives us a desire to want to be more like Him, to do His work, to do His calling upon our lives. To do everything we can to be more like Jesus, we must stand upon our faith tonight in Jesus Christ. <coughs> It's a lot easier to say, I have faith in Jesus when everything is going smooth, when everything seems to be going right and God is blessing us and, the, and we're on the mountaintop and everything seems to be going smooth and there's no battles that we are going through and when prayers are being answered right away when God is blessing you. But I believe true faith arises and is demonstrated when, we, when all hell seems to come against you and, and the storm is beginning to toss you to and fro and you know that God still has His hand upon you. You know that God is still your rock. Standing on faith is knowing even though I'm in the midst of a great battle, God is still working everything out for my good. Standing on faith says, I know that God is doing a miracle. He's working a miracle for me. I'm going to stand upon the rock of ages and trust and know that Jesus Christ will never leave me nor forsake me tonight. But it's normal for a child of God to go through storms of life, to walk through trials, to have their faith tested from time to time. But it's, in the, but it's the response and the mindset that we have during those times of trouble that I want to focus on tonight. Scripture tells us again that we walk by faith and not by sight. That Christians were to walk by sight, live all the things that we see and go through and feel there would be no relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, there would be no foundation for us to stand upon if there was no faith uh, in Christ tonight. Everything we believe in is produced by faith. Everything that we trust in the Word of God and believe in is produced by us having faith that God is still on the throne, that Jesus came and died for us, for you and me, died upon the cross, rose again to save you and me. It's produced, everything we believe in is produced by faith. <coughs> but as the carnal man, our attitudes and our actions depend upon life situations and circumstances. It comes natural to feel hopeless and, 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 and tired. So when we look at what's in the natural realm, but, it, but as children of the Most High God, we need to look uh, beyond the natural and start having faith that God is able to move, heal, and deliver tonight. We must understand our Adam nature wants to react when things don't go our way, but we must understand who God is uh, and know that He's still on the throne working everything out for our good. Uh, but we must understand that all things are passed away before all things become new. Uh, and when we are a child of God, we must stand and walk by faith uh, and not by sight. And I promise you, if you will just walk by faith and say, God, I trust you. I don't know what's going to happen. I know that I'm going through a dark time, but I'm going to trust. I choose to stand upon my faith to get me through dark times and battles and storms of life that I go through. Amen. When in the battle, we tend to forget who the author and the finisher of our faith is. We forget that he is the prince of peace. We forget that he said he is our refuge. He we forget that he told us he would never leave nor forsake us. So we, so we begin to walk by our feelings and not stand on our faith in God. We must know and realize that these promises of God are there for us when we go through dark times. And we need to uh, read the word of God and cling to those promises and say, God, I know you're able to move on my behalf. I trust you. I'm going to lean upon your understanding and not, not and know that you're God uh, and you are God alone tonight. We must stand upon our faith to get through dark times in our life. 
But if we can just stand and walk by faith, our praises, our worship, and our relationship with God would never waver or falter. But in times of trials, our praises shouldn't be the most, uh, the strongest, and the loudest. Uh, during times of walking through the valley or climbing a mountain top, our praise and our worship still be, uh, should be committed to the most high God because He's doing everything for our good. He's trying to mold us uh, and begin to lead us and, uh, and to guide us into His perfect will for our lives. So it's in those times where our praise and our prayer life should begin to grow stronger and louder for Jesus. Jesus. Your faith in God is only going to grow as much as you water it by prayer. Those Hebrew boys kept their praise before the fire, in the fire, and after the fire. Their faith lied in Christ despite of their uh, circumstance and despite of how hot the fire furnace got. Their faith uh, and their trust still lied in Jesus Christ. They had a praise before the fire. They had a praise in the fire and after the fire, folks. If we can just trust and know that God is working everything out, that God uh, has not left you nor forsaken you, uh, our praises would never change. Our praises would never walk a uh, falter, but we would raise our hands uh, when the battle comes and, and when in the battle and after the battle because we can praise in advance for what he's going to do in our lives. It's by faith we know that God is going to work a miracle. It's by faith we can know that God has a reason for our valley. That God has a reason for our storm tonight. It's by faith that we believe God will never leave us. When all they can see is trouble all around, not once did they lose their faith in God. Not once did they begin to fear for their lives. <coughs> but Jesus met them in the fire. And if we can look toward Jesus, if we can walk by faith even in the fire, when the furnace gets hot, if we can block out everything the devil's trying to hinder us with and begin to look toward the Son uh, of Jesus Christ, we can see him working everything out for our good. Uh, if we can just look through eyes of faith and say, God, I know you're with me. I see you working behind the scenes. I see you working a miracle. Uh, I see you working a blessing for my good. Uh, and I will walk through deep valleys. Uh, I will I will swim through high waters as long as I know Jesus is right there beside me and my faith will never waver or falter but I will walk by faith and not by sight and I will cling to his promises and know that God will never fail me tonight Jesus can make our circumstances bearable if we would just look toward him I'm not saying that if you uh, feel hopeless and, and weary and discouraged that you don't have faith in God. It's natural for us. Uh, it's because of Adam's nature that we feel sometimes discouraged and lonely and lost in despair. But I want to remind someone. Uh, I want to encourage someone that if you just stand upon your faith uh, and, 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 and not walk by sight and trust in God, God is with you. Uh, he's there right beside you. He's holding your hand. Uh, his hand has never left you. Uh, but I want to encourage to stand upon your faith tonight. Amen. 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 <laughs> he is our protector. He is our provider. He is our problem solver. He is our strength. Uh, and He is our solid rock that we must stand upon. Right. The winds and the waves may come crashing down upon our lives and upon our family and homes. Uh, but if we stand firm on the solid rock of ages, uh, nothing and no one shall wipe you away. Nothing and no one shall hinder your praise and worship in God. Uh, but when your feet are planted, you can raise your hand and say, I'm walking by faith uh, and not by sight. Uh, and I'm going to come to church anyway. Uh, I'm going to kneel down anyway and pray. Uh, I'm going to lift my voice uh, and worship the one true God because I no, he will never fail me. Amen. <laughs> Walking by faith is looking toward the mountain view rather than looking at the valley. Walking by faith goes to God for answers. It gives us a prayer life. It gives us a peace that passes all understanding. It gives us reassurance that God still knows and cares. It gives us assurance that he sees exactly where we are. 
He sees exactly what we're going through. He sees every tear that you cried, every prayer that you prayed, everything that you're going through. God sees and knows exactly where you are. So we must stand upon faith tonight. Your faith may seem low tonight, but God knows where you are. He cares about what you're going through. If it matters to you, it matters to the Master. It may uh, seem small and minute to you. But if it affects you in such a mighty way, God sees and cares exactly what you're going through tonight. If it matters to you, it matters to the master. That's a good song. When we focus so much on things we can't change, we miss out on God's blessings. We miss out on what God is really trying to do in our lives. We've got to get our focus back on Jesus. If we could just stop trying to figure everything out on our own, stop trying to fix our own problems and our own circumstances, we might be able to see what God is trying to teach us and show us. I'm guilty of this. If something's not working out or something doesn't seem like it should be going the right way, I want to just get, I just want to jump in and take control. This, this is pretty comical. Uh, Taylor was sweeping the front porch of her house. And to me, it wasn't the right way. So I said, give me that room, please. So I started sweeping. Because, it was, because I thought she wasn't doing it my way, I thought it was wrong. But we're each, I'm starting to learn people do things their own way. Your way, it doesn't mean it's the wrong way. And that's how it is with Christ. We must understand not to try to jump in and take control when things aren't going our way. But God's looking down and saying, if you only knew what I have in store for you, you would just sit back and shut up and enjoy the ride. <laughs> but we must trust and stand on our faith in that and realize that God is working something for us. Right. That God is trying to lead us into a, a, a higher level of a relationship with Him. Right. So God, do whatever you have to do as long as I grow closer to you. Or empty me so I can be filled with you. Burn out anything that may hinder my relationship with you. Sometimes we're going to have to go through trials where God can burn out those impurities and those imperfections. But it's those times we must stand upon our faith and walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Amen. It's during those times that our faith is tested we learn to grow in the Lord. Romans 7 and 3, it says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. If I've never walked through a valley, I wouldn't know or never experience of God's keeping power. If I've never gone through trials, I wouldn't know about God's mercy and grace. If I've never fallen, I wouldn't know about God's love and forgiveness. If I've never walked through storms of life, I wouldn't know what breakthroughs felt like. If I've never walked through emptiness and loneliness, I wouldn't know what His love and His, uh, his loving arms would feel like to wrap me up and say, I got you where I need you. If I've never walked through anything, I wouldn't know what God is able and capable of doing in my life. We must stand and walk by faith tonight. Because I faced a battle or two, I've learned to walk by faith. I've learned that God is always faithful. I've learned that God is always on time. If we can just walk by faith. Right, excuse me. Praise. I didn't want to take that jacket off because the shirt's going to look too tight for me. <laughs> if we can just walk by faith. If we could just stand upon our faith tonight, we would have peace of mind. It's hard. I know it's easier said than done. But if we could just grasp a hold of this tonight and say, God, help me to learn to stand upon my faith. Help me to learn to walk by faith and to trust in you. Job 13 and 15 says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. 
We've got to learn to trust in Jesus. Though you walk through dark times, you must trust God through it all. Even when I've lost everything, even when uncertainty starts to form, yet will I trust Him. When discouragement seems to come in my mind and the devil tries to hinder me, yet will I trust in Him. It's in the fire we will come forth as gold. It's in the fire we are tried. If we can look, if we can look back at our past, we can say, God's been good to me. <laughs> He's always been faithful. He's kept me when I couldn't keep myself. He's been away when I could see no way. If we can look back at all the battles we've overcome and fought, we would realize God was always there. Amen. That God was always reaching out and fighting our battles for us. Those battles weren't there to try to hinder us. But those battles were there to make us stronger in Christ and believe in the Word of God and believe in the promises of God and to, uh, and to live in the hand of God. Amen. Trust in Jesus comes with putting faith in Him. A familiar story, as the, as the disciples on the boat with Jesus, the wind started blowing and the waves began to crash into the ship. Their faith in God began to waver. Their focus was on the storm and not on Jesus. They allowed their sight to overcome their faith. So they began to worry and doubt God. Fear gripped their hearts. And Mark 4 and 38 says, Master cares, thou not that we perish. Do you see everything that's going on, on around, around me? Do you see these waves and these, and, and these winds blowing and crashing into our boat? Why don't you care what we're going through? He says in verse 40, Why are ye so fearful? How is that you have no faith? If their faith would have rose up instead of fear, their hearts and minds would have been at peace. If their faith would have rose up, they would have known that Jesus has power over the winds and the waves. They would have just trusted God. And said, I, my faith and my trust is in you. I know you have, that all power is held in your hand. And you're able to calm these storms tonight. <laughs> that song says, when waves are over your head, they're under his feet. Yeah. When our faith is truly in God, we, could, we wouldn't doubt his ability and what he's able to do in those times in our lives. Faith will give you peace that you need. But I want to encourage and remind someone that God doesn't change based on life circumstance. Amen. On what doctors say, he's a God that has and never will change. Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we must realize that God is still on the throne uh, tonight. Uh, he's still watching out for you and me. He's not dead somewhere, but He is alive and well. Uh, he sees everything that, we, that we're going through. He will and has never changed. Uh, and His hand is still upon you tonight. He knows exactly where you are. He's still a miracle worker. He's still the same healer. He's still the same dead raiser. He's still the same uh, savior. He's still the same sanctifier and Holy Ghost filler tonight. Uh, and if that doesn't make you excited, we must stand up on our faith and know God is more than enough. Uh, he knows every problem. He can help you go through whatever it is that you're going through. Uh, but we must stand on faith. Uh, we must walk by faith and not by sight. No, Jesus Christ is with me. Uh, he has never and he never will as long as I'm in a, as I'm in a relationship with him. Amen. And he's still searching and reaching down for me. Yes. He's still trying to mold me. He's still trying to save me of my, of my uh, imperfections. 2 Corinthians 1 and 4 says, <coughs> Who comforted who comfort us, us in our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which or in any trouble, but the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. God is our comfort in the middle of our tribulations. God is our peace in the middle of storms of life. God is, is there for us. And he loves us and cares for us that he, that he is our comforter. 
In Matthew 14, when Jesus told Peter to come unto him out of the boat, he was feeling bold. His faith was in Jesus. He was willing to step out. He was committed to doing something he's never done before. Because his faith was in Jesus. He had bold unto him. Faith will give you boldness to lay hands on someone and declare in the name of Jesus. Behold. In the name of Jesus, this devil has to. That faith will give you boldness to speak the name of Jesus. Uh, and demons have to tremble at his name. Faith will give you boldness to do things you never thought that you would ever do. But as distractions began to rise around him, he lost focus and his faith wasn't so bold anymore. He began to sink. He began to go down. I know when, in my own life certain uh, situations where I said, God's going to help me. God is right there with me. I go to do it and then I get scared. Because our mind starts thinking about other things besides what he's called me to do. So I began to walk in fear. I began to walk in doubt. So I began to sink and go down. That's exactly what Peter did. But if you're here tonight and you and you've one time had great faith and once had great uh, boldness to step out where the devil has tormented your mind with the distraction, <coughs> with battles to try to knock you down. I want to encourage you to get back up. Let that faith rise up in you and push away that fear and say, I'm stepping back out. I'm going to rise up from these ashes and I'm going to walk in faith with boldness. I'm going to walk in faith with authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to rise up and keep walking toward Jesus. I'm going to rise up and walk by faith. I'm not going to allow the devil to try to knock me down. I'm not going to allow fear to cripple my mind and my relationship with Christ. I'm going to rise up and walk on that water. I'm going to rise up and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to rise up and lay hands on somebody. I'm going to rise up and believe God is still able and that God is still on the throne tonight. Yes. Amen. Forget about the distractions. And about the hindrances and start trusting in God. David's faith led him to overcome Goliath. When everyone else around him began to tell him, you're too small. You're not strong enough. You don't have the physique to overcome this giant. You don't have the authority and power to slay this giant. You might as well just give up and give in and go back home. You're never going to win. You're just a child. But David didn't look at his size. He didn't look at his weapons. He looked toward Jesus Christ. Uh, and he was standing on his faith in Christ. Uh, Goliath was just another battle to David. And in 1 Samuel 17 and 37 says, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Uh, and Saul said unto David, Go and the Lord be with thee. I've been in a battle or two and God was always faithful. He's never left me and he never will. I'm going to go towards this giant in the name of the Lord of hosts and I will claim victory. I've got the power and the authority by Jesus Christ and I'm going to march on in faith. I'm not going to walk by faith. I'm not going to walk by love. I said to walk my faith uh, and I will overcome this giant. Uh, I will overcome this devil, folks. Uh, and we can just let our faith arise up and say, I know I'm weak, uh, but he is strong. Uh, and I got the power to fight any devil that comes against me. I will stand uh, and I will be an overcomer tonight. Yeah. He stood upon his faith and said, In Jesus' name, I'm going to overcome this giant. Verse 45, it says, then, Satan, then, then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest in with the sword <coughs> and with the spear and with the shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. There was something greater in David, uh, and he, uh, uh, he had faith, and that was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ made him powerful. Jesus Christ made him stronger. Jesus Christ gave him the authority to overcome that giant that day. 
He tells him, you come, he may come against me with weapons and with a sword and a spear and a shield, but I come to you with something greater, stronger, and mighty, the name of the Lord of hosts. Bible says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. That devil may come with a, a pitchfork and a sword and a spear, but I've got the name of the Lord of hosts on my side. I've been washed uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I've got power in the name of Jesus to overcome any devil in hell. Uh, and I will be victorious as long uh, as I walk by faith and not by sight. As long as I stand upon my faith in Jesus, Amen. God will fight my battles for me. Amen. If you would have faith to believe that there is power in the name of Jesus, you can face any devil or hell and overcome. At his name is when and the waves have to obey. They must stand still at the sound in the name of Jesus Christ. Each time David faced a battle, it gave him a little more faith to fight the next one. David gave his battles over to Jesus and came out a winner every time. He, we must. As children of God, give our battles to Jesus Christ and he will go before you. The Bible says the battle is not yours, but it's mine. The battle that you're going through is not yours, but it's Jesus. And as long as we say, God, I give this over to you. I lay it down on an altar of prayer and say, God, I'm weak within myself. I'm nothing within myself. But in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. Amen. In my weakness, that's when Christ rises up in us and our faith begins to be bold and we can walk through the storms of life. Yes. We can walk through battles and trials and climb any mountain that may come our way. We must give our battles to Jesus tonight. If David would have walked by sight, he would have lost. He would have never made it. He would have never gone forth to the battle. If he didn't have faith in Jesus and know that there's power in the name of the Lord of hosts, I believe he would have never marched forth that giant. But because he stood upon his faith and said, God, I'm nothing without you. I can only overcome this battle, this giant, this devil, only because you live inside of me. It's not by power nor by might, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. And the spirit of God was in David to overcome that battle. Psalms 55 and 22 says, I'm coming to a close, tell if you want to help me. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. All we have to do is give it to Jesus tonight. He will give us the strength, the courage, and the power to overcome. We must have faith that God cares for us. We must have faith that God is fighting our battles for us and that God is right next to you. That God has his hand upon you. He hasn't forgotten you tonight. If you would stand with me tonight. Walking by faith is not knowing what tomorrow brings, but knowing who holds tomorrow. Walking by faith is seeing your loved ones not saved, but believing God is going to save them. Walking by faith is knowing someone has sickness all in their body and believing God is, is able to heal them and touch them. And to revive them. You may not see God's hand upon your life right now. But I promise you. He's right next to you. I promise you. He's walking right beside you. Church we must walk by faith. And not by sight. I want to do a general altar call tonight. Just for us to pray and say God. Help me to walk by faith. Lord, make my faith stronger in you tonight. Let's all come and pray.
lost a battle. And he never will. Never lost a battle. And he never will. That's a song that they sung at um, S.E. Weissing in the Eagle last week. Very powerful song. Very powerful song. But that remind us that God has never lost a battle. And he never will. Amen. Amen. The church is that's all we can do right now is stand on faith and trust in God and pray for God to intervene in a mighty way. Let's stand as we dismiss tonight in prayer. <coughs> Thanks for coming out. Thanks for your uh, dedication. I understand those who didn't want to come as well can be very uneasy, confusing on what to do. But thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, God, for this time together. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come and to worship you and to praise you and to lift up your holy name. God, I ask you that you would touch us tonight. God, I hope that you would encourage someone, Jesus, that we would leave knowing that our faith is in you, Jesus, that we would walk by faith and not by faith, by sight. And I pray that you would go with us now in the times of uncertainty and uneasy, God, I pray that you would just give us a peace of mind, God, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, and I just want to thank you for everything that you've done, and everything that you're going to do, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you, shake hands, be a friendly, and tell someone about Jesus.